Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and just beyond the safe side, hello. This is Lynn from the Learn English Network, and this is this week's live chat, not last week's live chat. So I'm hoping we'll be able to get it all done in one, uh, so I'd better crack on. And we'll start the week with Saba, who came in and said, hi. <laughs> um, OK, Saba, capital H, one I, and a full stop. And I said, hi, Saba. Saba ran away screaming. Um, so... Am I that scary? Dario came back with his account and said, anyway, girls and guys. Girls? Really? I would say with a mixed group, say, hello, everyone. It's much safer. <laughs> um, and Dario went on to say, anyone know some good audio book out now? OK. Does anyone know of any good audio books that are out now? And no space after the W in now before your question mark. I'm not a big fan of reading on a comp display, so I have to find an alternative till I go to the library. So I'm not a big fan of reading on a computer display, so I have to find an alternative until I go to the library. No need for an exclamation mark. Or do you have some interesting stories to tell? And again, um, no space between the last L of tell and the question mark. Um... Zeb said, stories that I've enjoyed listening to are The Graveyard Book and Coraline, narrated by N. Gaiman. That's Neil Gaiman. Uh, this guy has got a talent for telling stories. He certainly does. Um, I asked, what kind of books do you like, Dario? And Dario replied, I love dramas, mystery, not Agatha, and that kind of mystery. So not murder mystery, I took that to mean. Uh, fantasy and anything that is a little bit weird. OK, again, no space um, after the D and your exclamation mark. Dickens and Brontes, as well as Carl May and so and so. Little Adventures, I like reading all. OK, so uh, Dickens and Bronte, as well as Carl May, uh, etc, etc. Um, Little Adventures with a capital L. Uh, no need for an exclamation. I like reading everything. OK, um, I replied, I think Zeb's recommendation of Neil Gaiman is a good one then. There, oh, oh, it's a good one. Then there's Stephen Donaldson, C.S. Lewis and C.J. Chera. That should keep you going for a while. Our next book reading could well be Dickens, but I realise not everyone can take part. I read C.S. Lewis, says Dario, but this other guy's I shall check. Thanks again, Lynn. Lillian. <laughs> Lillian. Um, so I have read C.S. Lewis, uh, but these other guys I shall check. Thanks again, Lynn. L-Y-N-N-E. Um, Dario replied to Zeb and said, I have his books, but what I didn't know is that he has audiobooks. I'll check it out. Thanks, lady with a little red dwarf. <laughs> so didn't is short for did not. So you need an apostrophe. D-I-D-N apostrophe T. Aladdin came along and said, Hi, Dario. I recommended Macmillan Readers to you. OK. Um, not I recommended. I recommend. OK, or I can recommend a Macmillan Readers to you. Go to Macmillan website. So you could say go to the Macmillan website or go to Macmillan's website and test your level from the link below and gives the link. Then depend on your level. Click on title resources, form, main menu, then choose story that you like. OK, uh, then depending on your level, click on title resources from the main menu, comma, then choose the story that you like I'd say that you like the look, then choose any story you like the look of, OK? Uh, there is a sample for each story, chapter one, you can download and check yourself. So it, and then he says, with lots of links, pre-intermediate level, intermediate level and upper intermediate level. Uh, Dario said, hey, Aladdin, I'm glad you answered here and joined our conversation. Thanks for this site. It is really wonderful. I like how they have this little worksheets for the book you choose. OK, I'd say these little worksheets, this worksheet these worksheets. Uh, I'm currently in the Memoirs of a Geisha. Anyone read? Sounds like read it. <laughs> OK. I'm currently um, looking at, maybe, rather than in, I'm currently looking at the Memoirs of a Geisha. Has anyone read it? Uh, no, I haven't read it, said Zeb. Would you recommend it? Well, said Dario, if you like that kind of drama with with really nice plot and melodic sentences, then surely. So, um, if you like that kind of drama with a really nice plot and melodic sentences, then, T-H-E-N, surely. But to me, you are some kind of humorous, chilled person. I would say Mark Twain's kind of person. Intelligent, sharp-minded, am I right? Uh, so, intelligent has got two L's <clears throat> in the middle. I-N-T-E-L-L-I-G-E-N-T. -L -L -E -E 
As Eb said, I'm not going to disagree with that. If you eventually change your mind, I'll not get angry, though. Back to the book. What genre is it? Mystery? Crime? You see, just as I say, said Dario, it is a historical drama novel that is floated around life of a girl. OK, it's a historical drama um, that is plotted around the life of a girl. The novel follows her life as she is taken from little countryside to a big city and how she became geisha and generally how life flowed before and after World War II. I just have to say it is beautifully written. I'd agree. I've read it. It's, it's brilliant. Much better than the film. If you've only seen the film, get the book. Um, so you'd say the novel follows her life as she is taken from the countryside. And countryside is all one word, otherwise you're thinking about the side of a particular country. Um, countryside as in the fields and farms is one word. Um, to the big city, OK? And how she becomes a geisha. And then how life was before and after World War II. I just have to say it is beautifully written. OK, and again, watch um, with your comma. No need for a space between the Y from say and the comma. It just follows the word. And then you need a space after it. What is it? What's a geisha exactly? Asked Seb. What does it take to be a geisha? Daria replied, it's some kind of Japanese lady or a hostess. <laughs> OK, hostess, no E at the end. That has for a purpose to entertain a guests. OK, um, who has to entertain guests. G-U-S, just one S, T-S. One geisha must have various skills. A geisha must have various skills, like dancing, singing, playing instrument, and must be skilled in various fields of games. OK, so like dancing, singing, playing instruments, or playing an instrument, and should be skilled in various kinds of games. Based on the book, asked Seb, is there a special training to become a geisha or is it the mother was a geisha so the girl follows suit? The girl follows suit. So it would be she follows suit. OK, the girl follows suit. Mainly it is traditional, said Dario, which means it goes from mom to daughter. Tough, said Seb. And Zeb replied to Aladdin and asked, what story are you listening to, Aladdin? And um, I'm listening and reading Rebecca. So I'm listening to and reading Rebecca. Uh, a love story, said Zeb. Does it make you cry? Um, does it make you cry? That would be, do love stories make you cry? Or is it making you cry? Or do you think it will make you cry? OK. <laughs> Which we don't know. Aladdin hasn't told us, but Aladdin's a bloke, so he's not going to admit to crying, is he? Hey, guys, it's OK to cry. Show your emotions. Much better than bottling them up. Much healthier. Vino said hi. Uh, capital H, Vino, and a full stop. Uh, hi, Vino, said Zeb. Abdul Wahab said hi. And Zeb said hi, Abdul. Same thing, Abdul. Uh, Zeb then came in and said, when I come here, there is now an I called vocabulary that is constantly staring at me. I try not to pay attention, but it is just staring at me. It's scaring. OK, perfect up to there. Then you'd say it's scary or it's scaring me. There's also that bar graph. I want fun and fantasy for improving, not statistics and classification. And what is this checkbox at the end of the menu? Have I stepped into a twilight zone? What's going on here? <laughs> OK, well, um, what are you talking about, said Aladdin. Where is the checkbox? And I replied, lol. The checkbox should disappear if you refresh the page. I managed to break a few things by adding more pictures. The eye is meant to be eye-catching. Get it? It's not here any longer, said Zeb, but trust me, it was this morning. The eye staring at me and the performance chart are still there, though. Brrr. <laughs> well, I was just trying to add more pictures. Someone said the vocabulary picture wasn't very clear. It's piercing now, said Zeb, but it might just be me. <laughs> Um, it is, but it's kind of, how do you show vocabulary in general? I'm kind of saying, just look here, have a look, take a peek. <laughs> you didn't mention the nice new books for the grammar page. Um, and you didn't mention the new, um, the lovely new pictures for the vocabulary pages. There's even a strawberry in there. So, yeah, I'm sorry to shock you, but you'll get used to it. It's just change. So Parser came along and said, hi, guys. Zeb said, hi, Parser. No kidding, you're a music composer. Is there anywhere we can listen to some of your music? I'll second that, I said. Parser got a bit shy and never came back. Mansi said, H-I-I-I-I. Um, hi, capital H, small i, full stop. 
Hi, Mansi said Zeb. That was it. And Dasha Anand said, Hey, I uh, e am Anand. Okay, so hi is H-I with a capital H. I, capital I. Anand is your name, so you need to have a capital A. And don't forget, forget a full stop. Hi, Anand said Zeb. Hello, Anand said I. That was it. Satish said hi. I said hello. That was it. Hi, I am Mika, said Mika. <laughs> And Zeb said, hi, Mika, how are you? I said, hi, Mika. And that was that. So Dario said, dear Lynn or Zeb, where can I and actually can I send you my entrance exam for you to check it? I will need some explanations if you would be able. So again, you've put dear Lyain, it's Lynn, L-Y-N-N-E. Where can I send you my entrance exam for you to check it? And again, watch your spaces with your punctuation. I will need some explanations if you felt able or if you were able. Okay. Um, So then I replied, what do you mean by entrance exam, Dario? It sounds like a lot of work and might be considered cheating. (laughs) And Dario went, no, no, no. It's an entrance exam for university, but for the past uh, 2013 year. So um, for last year, I would say for last year, comma 2013, it has 20 tasks, but I need just a few of them explained. University gave us that test for preparation. If you consider that, okay, if you could consider that. So I replied and said, okay, pop it in the forum, but make sure you try to answer the questions and tell us what you need help with. You might not be able to post a new topic, so just append it to a current one in the let's practice section. Where I can find this section, asked Dario. So where can I find this section? And then went on, I'm a newbie to the forums, so it is a little harder for me to find that stuffs. Okay, stuff is uncountable, so um, just stuff. A beaver, said Zeb. I think it's a beaver, and turning cogs is the graphic for this section. It's between words, 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 and in the news. Can you spot it? Found it, said Dario. Ha, nice explanation indeed, Zebby. Merci. (laughs) Hello, Zebby. Um, I made it easy as you seem to not have fully developed your exploration skills or maybe you were just in a hurry. Oh, what tremendous humour skills you have, Dario said. (laughs) Okay, I would say, oh, what tremendous humour you have. (laughs) Was that sarcasm? Uh, Zeb said, I seem to have a fan. Wow. I was wondering how you would react to this one. I'm still not sure. And then Dario said, despite of grammatical error, I will say I'm loving it. I don't know why, but to me it's really funny. Okay, in spite of grammatical errors, I will say I'm loving it. I don't know why, but to me it's really funny. Again, what's your spacing? You, the first Y you put in was fine, but then after to me, you've got a, a habit of adding a space before the punctuation. You need to just give your little fingers a slap when you do that. Stop it! <laughs> and then Dario went on, and because I know you love grammar, I was wondering, is a continuous past right? OK, um, and because I know you love grammar, so it was sarcasm, uh, <clears throat> and then full stop. Um, I was wondering, is that the continuous past, right? Or you could say, I was wondering, that is the continuous past, right? Or I was wondering, is it the continuous past? Full stop. Um, OK, 20 schoolwork tasks. I used to loathe school. I have to tell you that I have never been a good student and most teachers didn't like me. Nah, said Dario. I like to study, but again, I have to quote you. I want fun and fantasy for improving, not statistics and classification. So in most cases, I was just like in your case. Huh? (laughs) OK. Careful what you write, Zeb. It can come back to bite you, can't it? There might be a way, said Zeb, if you can turn it into a conversation here to get your explanations. I might be interested in those tasks. Not sure I'll be able to give any right answers, though. I will scan it and post a picture, said Dario, so you can tell me what can be interesting to you, little red dwarf. Ha ha. Anyway, what time is it at your place? Here in Bosnia is now 21.11. So here in Bosnia, it, here in Bosnia, it is now 21.11 and then a full stop. It means that I'll have to read some potential boring stuff. Eek, said Zeb. Uh, potentially boring, OK? When you said that you needed some explanations, I understood that you had questions about some of these tasks or something you wrote, but it seems that I was wrong. Oh, sorry, I'm getting a bit croaky. I've got hay fever. Um, Dario said, all right then. Uh, Dario, 1L. The tasks go like this. 1. Tenses which I understand a little bit lower than the other tasks. 
So you have four sentences and then you have to decide which one is in right time and which one is properly written. So you have to decide which one is in the right tense and which one is properly written. Only that is causing me a little problems. Only that is causing me a few problems or causing me a little problem. Other tasks like conditionals, articles, task which has this sentence, the French enjoy spending holidays in the countryside, ha, prepositions, indefinite pronouns, passive, reported speech and a vocabulary are easier. Sound interesting? Ha ha. Uh, sounds boring. Like my worst school days, said Zeb. I think you should take Lynn's proposal. Agree, says Dario. And Zeb said, make the most of the feedback you'll get on the forum. I switched to some Spanish now. See you. So I'll switch to Spanish now. See you. Um, so Dario, you have posted it. I've asked you a couple of questions. When you ask me to give you the right answer, you have to tell me what you think is the right answer first. OK, so I'll, I'll have another look when I get off here. Uh, Ed came along and said, hi, Aladdin. Can you tell me more about that level test you were talking about in your recording? Hi, Edward, said Aladdin. Go to Macmillan website and test your level from the link below. So go to the Macmillan website. Then, depend on your level, click on, I think I've already read this one, blah, blah, blah. Ed said, thank you. I will see what it's all about. Is it a reading test? Try it now, said Aladdin. Yes, I forgot the M at the end, said Ed. OK. I'm not sure what that was all about. but Oh, maybe the M at the end of dot .com, yes. Uh, Blasman95 came along and said, hi, everybody. Just a full stop needed at the end of everybody, Blasman. And Zeb said, hi, Blasman. Uh, Zoheb came along and said, hello, everyone. OK, everyone is one word, Zoheb. And don't forget your full stop. Gillam said, hello, add me to your Skype. Gillam Kassar. Oh, uh, that's... How, who, who could resist? <laughs> Best to get to know people before you say that. Everyone is one word, Zoheb, said Zeb. How are you doing? Zoeb, Zoeb said, yes, in hurry, I made this mistake. OK, so yes, I was in a hurry when I made this mistake. Then full stop. Then capital R, recently, I am doing papers and I am busy in exam. So uh, recently, I have been doing papers and I am busy doing my exams. Then Zeb, how are you? Uh, Zeb said, I'm getting impatient. Saturday, I'll swap my glasses for contact lenses. I'm looking forward to seeing what I'll look like with no glasses. Uh, Zeb said, wish best of luck. How will you feel without glasses? So, um, I wish you the best of luck. Full stop. How will you feel with a capital H? Because it's a new sentence, OK? Um, I was told, said Zeb, that short-sighted people see much better with contact lenses than glasses. I'm really curious to check this out. To be continued. I think you enjoy lenses, said Zoeb. So Zoeb, she hasn't got them yet, so what you'd say is, I think you will enjoy lenses. I also replied to Zeb and said, oh, good luck, Zeb. And Zeb came back and said, I don't see better, but with no frame in the way, I'm so happy that my peripheral vision is back. I seem to see much more, but also receive more light. It, daddled, it dazzled me yesterday. Even though the ceiling was low, my brain needs to adapt <laughs> indeed. Um, and I forgot to ask you in the quiz how you were getting on with them, uh, Zeb. But uh, next time on Thursday, you'll have a better idea, I guess, on Thursday. You can tell us how you're getting on then. Benno21 came and said hi. Benno, capital H, small i, full stop. Zeb said hi. Look how, ha, look how Zeb wrote it. That's the way to write it. Um, Corbill came along and just said hi Zoeb uh, Ahmed so Zoeb quite nicely said hello and um, Zeb also said hi Corbill when you want to be sure that Zoeb will notice your greeting it's best to reply to him by using the reply link instead of creating a new conversation another way is to use the at name feature and Zoeb came back and said hi Corbill how are you and uh, Zeb said, ha ha, Zoeb, if you reply to me and not to Cobbill, uh, and not Cobbill, he will not be notified of your reply. Oh, sorry, said Zoeb. And normally we say O oh, with an O-H. And then don't forget your full stop. Uh, Cobbill, even though you said hello to Zoeb and Zoeb said hello to you, um, you haven't replied to Zoeb. So keep an eye open when you do come into live chat. You might not get a reply straight away. Uh, but keep your eyes open because somebody somewhere will go hello. Uh, Ed came along and said, I have just tried typing English live chat on Google to see how popular this page is. And it's always the first result. 
Uh, Seb came along and said, Ed, you changed clothes. It's still the same mad doctor in your avatar, isn't it? Uh, Ed said, yes, I got bo- bored of the lab coat. Does it mean no more experiments, asked Seb. My avatars don't have any meaning. I chose this character because I like the show. OK, said Seb, it has no meaning. It represents the virtual you, though. How about yours, said Ed. I've heard you refer to it as a red dwarf. I thought it was a witch. I don't mind you seeing it as a witch, said Seb, but bear in mind there is no prominent mole on the nose. I insist on this. I didn't know about that, said Ed. As you've already noticed, there might be a pimple or two as this photo was taken when I was a teen dwarf. Hopefully you'll not disclose this snapshot of my nose zoomed out that you took yesterday. Um, Oh, I'm not sure what snapshot you mean there. Anyhow, um, she also replied to Ed's initial uh, statement. It might be the only English live chat. Well, so far. Do you mean the other English chats have died? Asked Ed. And Zeb said, when I do the search, only one result includes the three words, English, live and chat. All the other results, only two of them. Mm, not sure what you mean by that, but um, hey, great that we're on Google. Super. Yay. Uh, believe me, um, give it a few months. There'll be lots of English live chat pages out there. <laughs> Somehow my, my, my search terms get hijacked. <laughs> it's OK. I don't care. <laughs> So if you are doing it, feel free. But please, if you do English live chat, make sure you actually set up a live English chat. Oh, dear. So Pooja, Pooja Tiwari came along and said, uh, hi. So uh, Pooja, capital H, small I, full stop. Hi, Pooja, said Seb. I hope that you don't mind me not being as enthusiastic as, as you are to say hi. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's enthusiasm. It's more just to hear me pronounce it, I think. Uh, Panduka came along and said hello uh, capital H full stop at the end hello said Zeb and that was that Uh, Amber came along and said hi friends what's the discussion so Amber hi capital H uh, friends full stop and then capital W it's a new sentence Uh, what are you what are we discussing rather than what's the discussion what are you talking about what can we talk about all sorts of ways but what's the discussion Hmm. um Zeb replied, hi, Amber, as big guys, we decide what we want to talk about. Very true. Amber came back and Amber, I'm going to read this as you wrote it, just to give you an idea why you need to use punctuation. I'm 37 years old and I'm Catalan and I need to improve my English a lot to pass my final exam. It's urgent. Please ask me things. Mm, Okay, so it's urgent. Yeah, we don't do urgent here. Okay. (laughs) He needed to come a few months ago. Uh, please, capital P, ask me things, full stop. Now, your first statement. I'm 37 years old, comma, and I, capital I, am Catalan, capital C. Full stop. I, capital I, need to improve my English, capital E, to pass my final exam. OK, that's a full stop statement. And Zeb asked, when is your final exam? Now, there was no reply to that. So Zeb came along and said, I thought long and hard about my question for you. But five hours later, there's still no reply. I must have got it wrong. I replied to Zeb, I guess it's not that urgent, Zeb. Not urgent, it's good news, said Zeb. Exactly, I replied. Milton Eduardo Long Young came along and said, hi, someone here? And Zeb said, hi, Milton. And I replied, just heading off to the land of Nod, good night. Uh, so someone here, you'd normally say, is anyone here or is anyone online? And uh, your hi, capital H, and a full stop after the I. Simon Chang came along and said, hi, how are you guys? Oh, that's nice, Simon. Uh, capital H and capital H for how are you? Uh, Hi, Simon, said Zeb. Waking up with the perspective of spending part of the day along the coast of Normandy. It feels very good. I replied, I'm jealous, Zeb. And uh, Zeb said, I feel so lucky not to be landlocked. You are, Zeb. You are so lucky. (laughs) Uh, Zeb then invited us all to take part in a quiz. uh, It's called Which English Do You Speak? And she said, at the end, you can see our algorithm's best guess as to which English you speak, as well as whether your first native language is English or something else. And um, she said, their best guesses regarding my dialect of English and native language. Our top three guesses for your English dialect, Singaporean, Australian, American standard. Our top three guesses for your native first language, Italian, Finnish or Spanish. (laughs) Their algorithm seems to need some tuning for my native language, but I was happy to read Australian as my dialect of English in the top three. Ed said... um, 
I don't remember what I got, but I didn't get Spanish. What about your English dialect? said Zeb. Ah, oh, Zeb. American? I didn't get American either, said Ed. I remember I got Scottish, nor something, and something else. Uh, Scottish would be capital S. Um, Scottish, nor something, said Zeb. That makes me even more curious about the English you speak. It wasn't a speaking test, said Ed. I agree, but maybe a speaking style, said Zeb. Um, then Ed got curious about uh, Zeb's um, abilities on Discuss and said, how do you put a line to the left of your text? And Zeb said, I use HTML tags to format my messages. Here it was the block quote tag and then um, gave a link to the use the different tags you can use in Discuss. Uh, let's see, said Ed. Itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. 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 I know you only put that in so you'd hear me read it out, Ed. No wonder you've been waiting for live chat. <laughs> cool, it works, said Ed. I wish I could hear you speaking it. Any chance you'll record yourself? Yes, Ed, I want you to record that. Maybe if I ever practice my spoken English again. Uh, I hope that it'll still be around when it, that I'll still be around when it happens, said Zeb. Lol, 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 said Ed. I, I want to know why you've stopped practicing your spoken English, Ed. I really do. What put you off? Uh, it, it assumes when I start practicing again, it is, I assume that you used to practice it and now you don't practice it. I'd love to know why. Um, hi came along and said hello. <laughs> I'm just really looking forward to saying this one. So hi, you'd say hello with a capital H and a full stop. And I wrote hello, hi, or should that be hi, hi? <laughs> Uh, Te Wadras came along to say I want to improve my English, um, which is fine. Capital E for English, though, and a full stop. Hi, Te Wadras. Like all of us, you probably can. Te Wadras said, thanks, Seb. I hope I can do it. I need your help. And don't forget, full stop at the end. I'm always in for a chit chat, said Zeb, even if we're not always in sync. Um, Zoeb came along again and said, hi, everyone. Yay, Zoeb, you did all one word. Give yourself a pat on the back. Uh, Annie said hello. Uh, Annie, capital H and a full stop. Hi, Zoeb. I said, long time no see. Zoeb said, yes, because my annual examination, I am busy in study. OK, so yes, because of my examinations or because of my exams, I'm busy studying. Full stop. Uh, when will you have finished? I asked. And I don't know. He's not replied. Ed said, hi, how's it going? And Zoe said, it's going nice. So it's there is um, short for it is Zoe. So you need capital I because it's the beginning of the sentence. T apostrophe S. And I'd say it's going well. Uh, full stop. OK, I'm glad to hear it. Homestar came along and said, hi, hi there. Um, hi is H-I, not H-Y, and capital H. Hi, Homestar, said Seb. Yes, there are people around, if this can answer your question. Oh, was there a question? Oh, I, I suppose there was. There was a question mark. <laughs> hi there. <laughs> uh, Annie said, hello, is anybody available to chat? Pukar said, hello, Annie. Um, so, capital H, Pukar, capital A for Annie's name. It's her name, full stop. Hi, Annie, said Seb. I wasn't this morning. Monday mornings are often hard to get me started. Now you need more coffee, Zeb. Uh, Bukar came along and said, hello, need to learn speak English properly. OK, so Bukar, hello, capital H, and then comma. I need to learn how to speak English, capital E, properly. Hi, Bukar, said Zeb. It makes me wonder what proper English is. Maybe it depends on the rules you accept to follow. Yes, what is proper English? Depends where you come from, who you're talking to. And there are different proper Englishes. There's proper English for business. There's proper English for academia. There's proper English for everyday stuff. There's proper English for lovers. <laughs> All sorts of proper Englishes. Zara, Zara Abbas came along and said, hi, every one. Oh, Zara, you need to look at what Zoeb's writing. Everyone, one word. I went, hi, Zara. Everyone. Oh, I, I did a correction in text. Oh, that's bad. Uh, Mommy Sultan came in and said hi. Uh, Mommy? Mommy. Or oh, is it Momi? Uh, capital H, full stop. Hi, Momi, said Zeb. And Susu came along and said hello. Hello. <laughs> so there's no W at the end of it. There should be, shouldn't there? You've got hell, you've got O or ow. Um, yeah, but there isn't. So hello, H E double L O, capital H, full stop. Hello, Susu. Your avatar makes me feel very sad. 
Why, uh, said Zeb, sorry, Zeb came along and said, hello, Susu. Uh, why asked Susu, and a capital W, Susu, because it's the start of a sentence, start of your question. Isn't he a little kid that, like any kid, should be a happy little bugger? <laughs> I don't understand, said Susu. So, Susu, I, capital I, don't is short for do not, so you need the apostrophe. D-O-N apostrophe T, understand full stop. I just think that any kid should have a kid life. Play, laugh, be curious and noisy. So uh, I just think that any kid should have a kid's life. Uh, and that would be K-I-D apostrophe S, the life of a child. Uh, to play, laugh, be curious and nosy. It makes me sad that it's not the case. Oh, ok, okay said Susu. Um, that's capital O, capital K, or capital O-K-A-Y. And then a full stop. Can you introduce yourself? Yourself is what Susu wrote, uh, which should be capital C for can. You introduce yourself, one word, and question mark, no space after the F and before the question mark. You were fast changing your avatar picture, said Zeb. Myself, I like using my English for interacting with people, but I like it most when I can do it in real life. Uh, in real life. And yourself? Mm, I wouldn't say and yourself, I'd say and you? Susu said, my English speak is very bad. I can't speak in English easily. Me too, like to learn English. Okay, so capital M, my Engli my spoken English, capital E, is very bad. Full stop. I can't, so capital I, C-A-N apostrophe T, because it's short for cannot, uh, speak English, capital E, easily. Full stop. Um, I like to learn English too, so capital I, English with a capital E, too, full stop. Yes, said Zeb. Speaking English is tough. It took me some time before I could speak it with no fear, but now it seems like you can't stop me. What have I done? <laughs> I'll go to bed now. See you next time. Susu said, can I ask you some question? So that would be can with a capital C, I capital I, ask you some questions, some que a question or some questions. Uh, yes, go for it, said Zeb. We're still waiting, but that was only eight hours ago, so it could be coming. Any one here, said Susu, uh, we'd already replied, and I ever eat one, again, one word, Susu. Uh, I replied to Susu, I said, hi, Susu, I like the name you've chosen, because I was really looking forward to saying, hi, Susu, <laughs> it's just nice. <laughs> and then KK came along, KK said, hi, and uh, that would be capital H, small i, full stop. Anyone here? And again, anyone, one word. Question mark, because you're asking, is there anyone here? You can shorten it to anyone here. It's fine. Um, Hi, KK, said Zeb. Were you lacking inspiration for your disgust name? And uh, I replied, it's difficult making thinking up names for sites. I also replied to, to KK, said, Hi, KK, let me see. Twelve hours ago, I was in Kitely taking part in a quiz with members of the Learn English Network. Uh, and I must say, well done to Hermina also known as Traumvelt, for running the quiz. And congratulations for April for winning the quiz. <laughs> Sorry, Zeb. Um, Hatham Ahmed came along and said, hi. Don't forget your full stop. Uh, Zeb said, morning. Uh, Shadik said, hi, everybody. OK, Shadi, capital H, everybody, one word, full stop. And then um, Shadi said, nobody want to speak. So, um, doesn't anybody want to speak? Question mark is what I'd say here. Uh, Sarah came along and said, Hi, Shadi, are you still there? What is on the back of the hand of your avatar? And um, Sarah actually wrote something else and I, I kind of warned her off the use of DP, which actually can mean a digital dis uh, display picture. But really, if you look up Urban Dictionary, it's something to be avoided. <laughs> and she's changed it. Well done, Sarah. OK, I hope it wasn't too embarrassing, but I do like to point out things that could be misread or misconstrued in these things. OK, um, I replied to Shadi and said, hold your horses, Shadi. Live chat starts in nine minutes. OK. <laughs> Um, Sarah then replied to me and said, hello, teacher. And I said, hi, Sarah, how are you today? I'm fine, said Sarah, thank you. But it is not one of the good days for me, I guess. Uh, so I wouldn't say one of the good days. Uh, it's not a good day for me, I guess, is what I'd say there. Oh, why not, I asked. I have to do a lot of work. OK, I'd say I have a lot of work to do. OK, um, there are two deadlines looming. Both of them are of equal importance, but my head is spinning. I'm unable to concentrate. And I replied, oh, dear, I know that feeling. I'm not sure if chatting with me will help you to concentrate, though. Uh, Zara then replied, and I'm trying to find any ex any possible excuse to avoid work. Ooh, 
ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm so angry with me. So you'd say, oh, uh, just one. It's enough. O H, uh, comma. I'm so angry with myself. Yeah. Uh, then I thought to talk to you guys to recharge my batteries. Um, then I thought I can talk to you guys to recharge my batteries. Yeah, there weren't many guys today in live chat, but there were in Skype later. So I hope that helped you, uh, Sarah. Being angry with yourself won't help, I said. Maybe you need a short break and live chat is only for 30 minutes. A couple of questions for you. Did you eat breakfast this morning? Did you get enough sleep last night? Both these things can affect your ability to concentrate. I did, said Sarah. Sarah, actually, I've been travelling for the last two months and working non-stop. And I said, you're probably tired then. <laughs> maybe, said Sarah. So, um, maybe, one word, Sarah. And then you put a full stop, but really you've got but, it's a conjunction, yeah? So you can put comma, but the timing is so bad. How to get rid of these feelings? I said, I find a bit of exercise. 30 minutes yoga or a short meditation session helps me. If your life is running into one of deadline after deadline, it's time to make a couple of choices. Change it or get used to working to deadlines and make sure you reward yourself when you hit a deadline. If it's getting too much, talk to someone who can help you, your boss, your teacher, etc. Get used to it sounds a great idea, said Sarah. Changing it is not an option. I'll try yoga after the chat. Uh, I then asked, are the deadlines for work, study or your own idea? Most of my deadlines are my own fault, lol. I'm very good at putting off paying bills or doing the accounts. Ha ha, it's true, I'm sorry. I tend to use the network as an excuse for not doing, oh, I must do this session. <laughs> I'll add another session there. Oh, I must help this person with it. And usually there's something else I should be doing. <laughs> um, and Sarah said, ha ha ha. Mine are regarding work. Since I work as freelance, my deadlines are really tight. So, since I work as a freelancer, my deadlines are really tight. On top of everything, my brain is not fully functional. Okay, so small m. On top of everything, small m for my. My brain is not fully functional. And then full stop. I mean, I'm a bit slow due to, due to a neuro problem. It's not life-threatening, but makes life a bit difficult. Okay, I said, so you know what the issue is. Make sure you plan your schedule accordingly. Everyone says their work is really urgent, but most people are willing to wait for a good job to be done. Freelancers are notoriously bad at turning down work, but sometimes you have to. The worst thing you can do is push yourself so much that the quality of your work deteriorates. Sarah then says, you're right, it is so difficult to refuse an offer as freelancer. Again, as a freelancer. And then again, you could put a comma and then follow on with a conjunction, but... So, but the issue is that if you refuse, you might lose your client. Okay, you can, <laughs> can't lose them because they're not tied to you. Lose, L-O-S-E, not loose. I'll give you the link to the um, uh, little bit of practice for you. Uh, it's so it is so complicated, especially when one's brain is in a constant mode of protest. I wonder if there are any remedies to fix small issues of brain. I'd say, I wonder if there are any remedies to, s to fix small brain issues. <laughs> Or so, um, yeah. Anyway, I said, well, I'm not a neurologist, just an English teacher. As a freelancer, you have to realise that you have a lot of power if you're good at what you do. Once you have people who are happy with your work, they will use you again. You'll be like gold dust. You need to develop a good reputation, but after that, it's golden. If you find you're having to take on too much work, you're probably not charging enough. Can't say that too hard, too too much, to be honest. A lot of freelancers work far too cheaply. Risk it. If you increase your rates, but you get less work, but more money, it's got to be good, hasn't it? Anyhow, Sarah said, this is a really good piece of advice. I haven't been careful accept in accepting the work or negotiating the deadlines lately. Well, I'm feeling way better now. I think I can get back to my work after some, after some time. OK, some time would be two words. And then you write the next one. Sometimes a little break works so well. Good luck, I said. Let us know how you get on. And don't forget, you're not alone. We all feel overwhelmed from time to time. Many thanks, said Sarah. It was really nice talking to you. Ah, talking to you. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too nice. Two and two, yeah? Small O, uh, one O, two, and two, as in too much, too late, t uh, double O. So there you needed one O. Uh, you're welcome, I said. I'd better scoot now. I have a session booked on Skype. Bye, said Sarah.
Anyhow, uh, then um, I wrote Ellie and Live Chat 2014 0603, which is the 3rd of June 2014. And I only write that to say where I'm going to be called up to. OK, it's kind of my bookmark, if you like. It doesn't mean Live Chat's ready. The recording has to be done and fiddled around with and edited until it sounds OK. So then Ed came along and said, hasn't showed up here. And I don't see it on your speaker page either. Do I have to wait until it's finished? <laughs> OK, so I replied, yes, patience is a virtue. And I'll read you, for your, for your, for your patience, Ed, I'll read you a little sentence, uh, a little rhyme. Patience is a virtue, possess it if you can, seldom in a woman, never in a man. And on that note, we come to the end of live chat. Woohoo, one week, one recording, can't be bad. And uh, thank you, everybody who's taken part. Thanks to everybody who came along and uh, chatted on Skype later as well. It was actually very good fun to, uh, this week. So uh, don't forget the transcript will go up. Um, I don't record it, but the transcript will go up uh, next month. So the transcript for May will be available uh, probably sometime this week. OK, so keep an eye open for that in the members section. And um, yeah, thanks for listening. If you got all the way to the end, give yourself a pat on the back and I'll hopefully see you around this week so that we've got more to talk about next week. So get out there, practice your English, uh, have fun with it and be nice and be kind. And don't forget, if you can't be good, just don't get caught. Bye.